Thank you. Yo. I wish I could kiss you right now. I really wish I could kiss you right now. First class. All the way. We picked our meals. You're having steak. I'm having a steak on the plane? You're having steak hey, on the plane. Hey, yo. <laughs> Who else knew about this? Uh, your parents have been lying to you. Your what? coworkers have been lying to you. Our My coworkers. family has been lying to you. The same. Y'all are some sneaky. <laughs> He said, who knew about first class? Who's been lying yeah. to me? What? He, he asked who knew about the first class. I said, your parents have been lying to you. Your friends have been lying to you. That's real. You, they probably told you five times. You just don't listen. <laughs> yeah, he was there. And then the socks that you can't wear. But I'm still going to put them on. You can't. Huh? Together. Ah. Ah. Who keeps your forehead? I wrote really small, I'm sorry. I have a typed one in the room that's actually legible. Do you have your vows down here? Yes, they're with my dad. The old one's off and the new one's on. Yeah, we're switching, yeah.
So Lord, we begin with just an offering of praise. Thank you for this occasion, for these two very special people that we get to gather with and share in this moment with. Lord, may you be honored by all that takes place today. And would you bless it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you all please be seated? Well, let me just begin with a welcome to you all. Thanks for being here today. And I, I really want to say, uh, first off, on behalf of Nick and Sydney, uh, I want to say thank you to each of you who would choose to come and be a part of this today. All of you have traveled a distance, some a great distance, but I know that they are so very grateful that each of you is here today. Each of you played such an important part of their lives. You've encouraged them, you've challenged them, you've shaped them and molded them, you've cried with them, you've encouraged them, you've weathered hardships and victories with them, and therefore it's only natural that you would share in this moment as well. So thank you on behalf of them. But let me also say to the two of you, and I'm quite confident that I speak for everyone here as well, but thank you for the role you have played in each of our lives. You both are very much loved and you've played such an important part in uh, their lives that are here. Here's what I know, people don't feel obligated to attend weddings. They come because the two of you mean so much to them. Everyone's here today, not just because they're related to you or close friends, but because of the impact that you have made in their lives in a significant way. So I wanna thank you on behalf of each one here for allowing us to share in this moment together with you. Today, the two of you are entering into a brand new life together. When rightly regarded, marriage is the highest and happiest of human relationships. It's the preserver of true love, it's the foundation of the home, and it's the strength of society. It's designed to give two uh, people wholeness and completion as individuals becoming one. And so with that, I begin with a question. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? My dearest Nick, as I think about my life and how far I've come, I think back to how it used to bother me, how all of my friends would tell me, oh, you'll find the one and you know it, you just know. And I would get so frustrated because I didn't make sense to me. How would I know when I didn't know what I was supposed to be looking for? But the last thing, when you stop looking, the one fi actually finds you. You came into my life when I wasn't expecting it. We found each other at a weird time in our lives. You had just started your military career, and I was trying to figure out what state to live in next. I looked back and I realized that God knew what my heart needed. It was a smile the first time I saw it. I knew I wanted to see it for the rest of my life. You are the feeling I can't explain. You are home. I vow to love you even when the military changes our lives every two seconds and makes us live in places we don't want to live. I vow to continue to laugh at all of your quote unquote funny jokes, and I now we get to travel to all the world, to all the places we never desired to go, but that's okay because I get to do it with you. I pinky promise to annoy you forever and to always be your best friend. I love you forever and always from North Carolina and back. Dear Sid, before our friends and family and before God, I want to share these things before I take you as my wife. I promise to be faithful and to love and honor and respect you as long as we both shall live. I promise to share my inner thoughts and hide nothing from you, uh, no matter the circumstances. I promise to recognize your abilities, your incredible strengths that God has given you to conquer anything that's been placed in your way. With these vows, I promise to you uh, to be with you through the best and the worst times, through sickness and health and whatever may come our way, and promise to be by your side as a team in this life. I promise to both God and you that I will always be the man that you deserve, and I will strive to give you my all every day with our future family and continue to re uh, teach all the things that God has shown us and blessed us with in our lives until this point. I'm giving you this ring today as a symbol of the promises that I am making to you and a representation of our lives coming together, creating our story and combining our lives fully with one another. I love you.
I, I want to read for you briefly a paraphrase of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We know it as the love chapter. But it goes like this. It says, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. It doesn't keep score of the sins of others. It doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of the truth. It puts up with anything. Trust God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. You know, as I read these words, I think about my own marriage, and <laughs> these are challenging. I'm, I'm convicted. These are easy to say and read, but much more difficult to live, especially when we try to do that on our own power. However, when we surrender to God continually, when we seek His strength and His wisdom, those become less words, but really statements about our character. It's who we are. And so my encouragement to you on this day as you begin this new journey as a married couple is to live those words in your marriage marriage every day with God at the center of it. And I believe you will have a very successful marriage. Now it's important, an important part of a wedding is the exchange of vows. And what most people don't know here, the two of you already shared privately your specific vows to each other. What you're going to do right now, though, is basically state your intentions, your commitment to each other and really to God. It's your commitment that you're making into this relationship. And so, Nick, I want to begin with you. Nick, will you take Sydney to be your wife? Will you commit yourself to her happiness and her self-fulfillment as a person and to her usefulness in God's kingdom? Will you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health? in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to her so long as you both shall live. I do. And Sydney, let me ask you similarly, will you take Nick to be your husband? Will you commit yourself to his happiness and self-fulfillment as a person and to his usefulness in God's kingdom? Will you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and to be true and loyal to him so long as you both shall live. I do. And so the two of you have chosen to seal your vows with the giving and receiving of rings. Do you have those? So the ring is a very important symbol. First, it's a visible symbol of your commitment to each other and to each other alone. Sydney, your ring that you wear is a symbol to every guy out there to back off. Now you're taken. And Nick, yours does the same exact thing. Well, every woman out there to back off. But secondly, the symbolism of the ring is in its shape because it's in a perfect circle. It has no end. Just as your love for each other should also have no end. So Nick, I'm gonna invite you to take Sydney's ring and we repeat after me, I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a lasting reminder of my vow. As a lasting reminder of my vow. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. Go ahead and place it on her finger. Oh, definitely the dog's. Squeeze it all there and I'll sweetie. Sorry. Just leave it, just leave it. Just leave it. It's just <laughs> All right. You also take it. <laughs> and we repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a lasting reminder of my vows. As a lasting reminder of my vows. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. And it's as a symbol of my love and commitment. Go ahead. Well, there you go. All right. We're almost there. So close. Can't almost get anxious. <laughs> And one more thing. There's a guy who writes a book about marriage. His name's Norman Wright. Just a couple more things to think about. He says, marriage is a gift. It's an opportunity to love and be learned. Marriage is more often influenced by unresolved issues from our past than we realize. Marriage is a call to servanthood. It's a call to friendship. It's a call to suffering. 
But marriage is also a refining process. It's this opportunity to be refined by God into the person he really wants you to be. Marriage involves intimacy in all areas for it to be fulfilling. It's not an event, but a way of life. Marriage is a commitment. It's that last statement that I want to emphasize just now, that marriage really is a commitment. That word commit is a verb that means to do or to perform. It's a binding pledge or promise. It's a private pledge you now make public. It's the total giving of oneself to another. This commitment is not a 50-50 proposition. It's a 110% commitment given by both of you. And it's not a contract because contracts have if clauses or escape clauses that allow for the termination of the agreement. Marriage is intended to be a commitment and a binding vow before God for as long as you both shall live. And I encourage you to embrace that. With that said, you've stood here before your friends and your family. You've pledged your love and devotion to each other. We've witnessed you seal your vows with the giving and receiving of rings. Nothing left to say but by the authority of the gospel of Jesus Christ and as an ordained minister in the Christian church and in accordance with the laws of the state of Arizona, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Nick, you may kiss your bride. Join me and let me introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Nick Jackson. Give it up. When we were younger, you started all with the look you gave. It spread over and over among us. When we were younger, when we were young. I didn't mind keeping an eye on you Won't you fill the room without a whisper When we were younger And I held my breath and Like it was my last one But you stayed it right in front of us You stayed it right in front of us When we were younger We'd sit around to see your point of view Watch you give an inch and take the moment there When we were younger And still I had my breath and Like it was my last one But you stayed it right in front of us Still it right in front of us Like when I saw you for the first time I know I felt like this before everybody for being here today to support Sid and Nick. It makes my heart so happy to see everybody in this room showing them so much love. the pleasure of being Sydney's maid of honor and her best friend for the last 21 years. Um, wow, we're not those little girls in fourth grade anymore. <laughs> 
So many stories I could tell, but I would never subject either of us to that level of embarrassment. But I will say that through all of our years together and our countless sleepovers, sleepovers, I think Scott only asked me to leave once. <laughs> Not a bad track record. Um, said I would like to take this moment to give you, Ty, Vicki, and Scott a big thank you for allowing me into your life so many years ago and loving me as one of your own and truly becoming a second family to me. <laughs> oh, dang it. Now I really need Zoom. <laughs> um, I've watched you grow and change in so many ways. Your spirit of adventure and fearlessness has always motivated you, motivated you, and I truly believe that's what led you to Nick all the way in North Carolina. Sydney, you're loyal, selfless, and a strong woman, and I know you'll be a wonderful wife to Nick. Now on to you, Nick. First off, I want to big, I want to give a big, big thank you to Lanita and Joey for raising such a true gentleman and for always taking such good care of my girl. Seriously. <laughs> uh, when we first came out to visit you guys and to meet Nick for the first time, um, I knew after the first day that he was the right guy for Sid, just by the way he cared for her dogs, I mean kids. Pause. Nick, <laughs> you have supported her through a lot, and I'm very grateful to you for always being so respectful of her and her decisions. I have no doubt that you'll make Sid very happy. Now for the both of you. Remember, it is not always the good times that make you fall in love. You can fall in love in the hard times as well. And after witnessing your relationship grow and seeing your happiness here today, I'm sure you too will spend every day for the rest of your lives falling in love with each other over and over again. The force is strong with this couple. Cheers. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love you guys. Mic drop. Okay, for all of y'all that don't know me quite well yet, I talked good about Sid last night, and that's enough. I love her to death, but me and her talked about it afterwards. She said, that was hard for you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I do love her to death, and she is my new second daughter, and I will take her. The 30-day uh, thing we talked about, I guess, is up, Vicky. So, um, Nick, I've known you your whole life. And it's been longer on my side than it has yours, I think. Um, a lot of these gray hairs are yours uh, and your brother's. But uh, you have always been a very, very protective person. And if he doesn't do that to you, you let me know. Nick has always taken care of everybody he could. Uh, whether he liked him or not, Nick would take care of everyone. And that's just the way he is. He's never met a stranger. I don't know where he gets it from because I'm kind of shy. But uh, I used to call him Mini Me, I said last night, and something happened, he kind of started growing up on me. But, uh, son, you have made you, me and your mother very, very proud. And uh, I could not ask for somebody as fine as the way you've grown up. And I will learn more and more and more about my lovely new daughter. Um, I just want to give you one piece of advice later in life, much later in life, if, it, if you want it to be, if you end up having two boys and they have closets back to back, make sure they don't want to dig a hole in between them because they thought it would be kind of cool just to go in through the wall to each other's room. I'm glad you didn't. What happened? But I wish y'all all the, all the happiness in the world. And uh, if he ever does anything wrong, you let me know. I will take care of it. I love y'all so much and wish you all the happiness in the world. Love you. It's... 
Mary Cruz, I'll try to keep it together too. So, <laughs> so, uh, so thank you everybody. Once again, I know a lot of you have traveled very far to get here and uh, we just feel all the love in the room for this new couple. Um, thank you for coming to help celebrate this union. Vicki and I raised a remarkable daughter, instilled in her great characteristics, resourcefulness, caring, compassionate, strong and independent, and hangs a great ceiling fan, right, Joey? <laughs> we can see that Lanita and Joey did the same with Nick. I recall returning from a weekend conference uh, and asking Sydney what she did over the weekend. And she said, oh, uh, Nick and I binged watch Star Wars over FaceTime. It was that moment I realized this was more than just a uh, casual COVID correspondence. Um, and I'm surprising that the centerpiece is not a blooming onion because their first date was a virtual date at Outback. Nick drove an hour to the nearest Outback. Um, as parents, I know all of us were concerned about a young woman driving across country to be with a man that she met online. But over the course of the last couple of years, we've all got to know Nick and Sydney. Um, and we just have been both been welcoming them both into, into our families. I think I can speak for Vicki and myself that Nick is a great partner for Sydney. And we love him as one of our own family. I know from our side, Sydney has always been a great judge of character of dogs and people. <laughs> so we approve. <laughs> so. Apostle Paul writes that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Kindness, like all God-given attributes, is available to us all. So if you're annoyed with your spouse, because they left the toilet seat up, or they're late, or whatever they did. Don't get mad at them. Pray for them. You'll both be happier for it. Let's raise our glasses for a toast to Mr. and Mrs. Jackson to a long and happy marriage. Cheers. Cheers. get this a little longer than I expect. <clears throat> Good evening. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today to help celebrate this amazing couple. It means a lot that you all are here. For those that don't know me, my name is Marcy, and I have the privilege of being one of Sid's best friends. Sid and I first met on our first day of training at Wells Fargo six years ago. And it's been a wild ride ever since. We were inseparable. No manager or aisle could separate us no matter how hard they try. So many memories were made in that building, but some of my favorites were going out on break to scout for the closest parking spot by the exit. My loud pants that were a favorite for not only Sid, but her boss at the time. And my most favorite, is when one day when it started to rain, Sid and I ran towards the entrance only for me to slip and fall in a puddle of rain. Still to this day, she swears that she didn't hear me yell out that I fell, but I think she did. <laughs> it was every man for themselves. So many memories and events have occurred in these six years of friendship, jobs, love, moving states away, engagements, and now marriage. But no matter what, we were always there for each other. And that was something that never changed. Since before August, it had been three years since we've seen each other in person. But thankfully, technology and our strong bond kept us together. It's wild to me how she was just a tall, chill girl in my training class to hear six years later at her wedding night. And she looks absolutely beautiful. 
and Nick looked so handsome. I remember when Sid first told me about Nick, I was so excited for her, but hoped to God that Nick was it. He was and still is. We talk about relationships and love over FaceTime, many FaceTimes. Sid would always say he checks all my boxes, military, loves dogs, and an ally to the gay community and so much more. But there was something I noticed every time she spoke of him. Her face would light up and her voice would get a little higher. And in those FaceTime calls, I'd glance over at Nick and he would have a look on his face with such love and affection for her that I knew that she'd met her future husband. What can I say about you that hasn't been said already? You're an amazing person who is loving, kind, supportive, and a true gentleman. So thank you so much for loving my best friend, for respecting, supporting, and caring not only for her, but Camel, Kona, and Benji. Six months ago, my life changed forever and I didn't know what to do. I was lost broken, scared, and ready to give up. And out of all the friends that I lost, you were the only one that stayed. And you've been there for me even when I wasn't there for myself. Though it was an unfortunate event, I'm glad it happened because it brought us closer together. You not only helped me back up, but you held my hand through all the challenges and successes since. You've shown me that family is not only through blood, but through those that love, support, and care for you when everyone else does it. Your family has welcomed me in with open arms, love, and support. Then I'd also like to extend my gratitude to Vic, Rick, Scott, and Graham for all that you've done for me during this time. Sid. You're more than a best friend to me. You're my sister my ride or die, and my daddy, and I love you so much. I love you so much that uh, I'm not only wearing a dress for you tonight, but I was wearing heels and makeup too, which is something I never do, and that just goes to show I'll do anything for this girl. You saved my life and helped glue my broken heart back together again. I don't know how I could ever repay you, but I'm forever grateful to you and Nick. Grateful to be one of your best friends and to be, and to be part of your bridal party to help celebrate your big day. You are a clear example that once you get through the bad dark road, you'll not only see brighter days ahead, but you'll also find love again when you least expect it. So to quote a line from the theme song to your favorite show, I'll be there for you. For whatever and whenever you need me. I'm always a call away. Because no matter the distance between us, I will always be there for you. So congratulations to you both. And may you have a long, happy marriage together. I love you so much. Cheers. All right, that's going to conclude the toast in the Um, can everyone hear me? All right, good deal, good deal. Uh, I didn't plan this speech. This is my first wedding. Uh, I'm a bit intoxicated, but that's okay. Uh, and some niggas said always know me. I'm always intoxicated when I have nothing to do, so it's okay. Uh, the, 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 the hard talk is over. Now it's the fun stuff. I'm going to go back from when I met Nick. I met Nick a couple years ago. He came to our unit in Cherry Point in the Lock, North Carolina. Um, at the time, he didn't have a chief. We worked in the same building. His Marines was out of control. Um, man, listen, don't listen to Miracle commercials. They not that all hyped up, okay? <laughs> There's some funny ones in there, and Nick had about 99% of them. <laughs> so with that being said, I stepped in and I helped him out with the, the Marine Corps stuff. During that time, me and Nick, we built a, a brothership. Uh, I joined the Marine Corps for family because from where I'm from, Baltimore City, uh, I didn't have much of a family growing up. 
So everyone, including Lex, everyone I met in the Marine Corps became a family. And Nick from the Student Marine Corps, he became part of the family. So I looked after him as such as he did me. He then tells me that he's going to be moving into Jacksonville. I was like, oh, I live in Jacksonville. You know, at the time, that's when he met Sid. My first time meeting Sid was through a video camera. I couldn't see her, but she could see me. <laughs> Security camera. <laughs> it didn't work well. <laughs> you know, um, I helped Nick move everything into the house. What did Sid do when she finally got to North Carolina? She found out I like warm butt light. Don't ask no questions. That's my thing. Let it be. Papa Bear, don't say nothing. <laughs> don't say, don't say nothing. Next thing you know, every time I go over Nick's house, there's a bottle of, uh, that's not a bottle, but there's a box of beer, of warm beer in the closet for me. What I will say is just as much as I love Nick and Nick came from my family, I finally get to meet Sid in person. When I met Sid in person, she just became as close as his family to me. Okay? Um, I don't want to ramble, so I ain't going to go into depth. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And this is when I knew it was real. This is when I knew it was real family. In 2002, I, uh, 2022, I lost a lot of things. I came outside the Marine Corps. I realized the family that I, did, I thought I had, I didn't have. Right? I had a big circle. I thought I had a big circle of family, but when I got to the Marine Corps, it came real tight. Next thing you know, I only had three, four people in my circle. Within that three, four circle, it was Nick and Sid. Nick and Sid understand that I messed up or whatever happened, it happened, but they didn't stop believing in me. Nick parents did not stop believing in me. Sid parents did not stop believing in me. There you go over there. I love you, big girl, you look good. <laughs> did not stop believing in me. I appreciate that. I love your family for that. I love you for that. With that being said, I'm so happy to have you as a part of my family. And as you know, if you ever need me, went from an hour away, like from 13 hours away, or as such, I gotta drop a day and eight hours to get here. <laughs> I'm gonna come whenever you need me because at a moment notice, you have always been there for me. So, can I get a toast? for Nick and Sid. Hi, Nick and Sydney. Well, here you are, home from your honeymoon looking at all these great pictures. What an evening this has been. So much. Nick, I want to tell you, the first time I saw a picture of you, I knew you were the right guy. I could see it in your eyes. And I knew I loved you that moment. And then Sid said, Graham, you got to come see him. You got to come to my house. He's not going to understand you and I. And I agreed. And I had the greatest time. And I just fell more in love with you. And I have known from the very beginning you two were meant. You can't make up your love story. It's so different, so far-fetched, and yet such a great outcome from a little online chat. I am just so excited for you. And Sydney, you know how I feel. You are my sweet, sweet granddaughter. And I love you dearly. Better darn well give me some good grades. Because I need them. I'm not getting younger. <laughs> and I know you will when you guys are ready. I am just so excited. And trust me. Get moved around. Your grandma's coming for a visit. I don't care how old I get. And I don't care who else complains. Wink, wink, we know who that is. And um, I just am still going to be as young as I want to be and come and spend that time with you guys. I just love you too much not to have you in my life. And I don't know what else to say other than I just love you both to pieces. I am so excited that now officially Nick is my grandson. 
and I am thrilled to tell people I have him as a grandson and that he is my granddaughter is such an incredible part of my life. We have an odd relationship to say the least. Well, what fun have we had? Remember when we used to go to Disneyland and you and I would pretend we were going to go on the roller coaster and we'd climb clear to the top. I'd look at you, you'd look at me, and you would say, let's just walk across and go down. And that's exactly what we did. We were compadres for sure. Just so many events that we have been through together and all good. And you've had some heartbreak, we all have, but we got through it. And even that time that you lived with me, I learned so much more still about you. It was such a great time. And it was a good healing time for you. And so I just could go on for days, I guess, but I won't. I love you both dearly. I am excited for your future. I feel like God has brought you together and he's going to bless you together. And I just feel so strong in that. I love you. Nick and Sid, we love y'all so much, are so proud of y'all, and cannot wait to see what the future holds and where your travels will take you, and always remember to come home. Love you both very much. Nick, you uh, made a wonderful groom. I love you as a son. Uh, Sid, I'm so glad to have you in the family, and I love you dearly. I can't wait for y'all to come visit, and we'll have a good time. I was waiting for the moment to arrive Waiting for the moment to arrive I was waiting for you And I wouldn't miss it for 